It's Giles here with another model and print, and this week we're going to be making a laptop stand. Um, I've been working away from my desk quite a lot recently, and I found that I'm uh, leaning over the laptop too much, so I want to be able to lift the screen slightly, um, and also it's got to fold flat because it's a pretty thin laptop. So basically what I'm going to have is uh, two walls at either end of the laptop, and then I'm going to have uh, a piece in the back uh, that joins both of them. And it's all going to be put together with 3mm steel rod, because I've got that in stock. And it's great for making bearing surfaces uh, and joining things together. So we'll just jump on over to the CAD and uh, see how it's shaping up. OK, so here we have the final model with the two side pieces, the two back pieces, and joining rods. And if we have a look at this corner, we can see uh, we've got this little clipping hinge that clips into a 3mm rod just there. If we look at the, one of the side pieces, it's really simple. We've just got a big triangle with a little hook at the end. Um, and then we've got uh, a couple of triangles cut out of it. And this lightens the print as well as uh, it looks quite nice. Um, and then we've got a couple of cubes cut out of here, which gives us place for the hinge and a rod that runs vertically through there. Now, if we look at the back piece, again, it's pretty simple geometry. We've got this little L-shaped piece of stuff and then we've got this cutout which is basically this cubes that I was showing you earlier but um, sort of inverted. We also have this big circle, this squash circle which again is mostly visual but lightens up the prints and we've got this sort of keyed bar that makes the catch. We've also got the holes here that the three millimeter rods at the back runs through. And if we put this all together with one of these just flipped this way and the two side pieces we get our final model. So let's just jump over to the slicer and see what we can do. OK, so I've just cut the uh, side piece into two parts with a stepped cube, which gives us this uh, overlap lap joint. Uh, and then I've imported it into the slicer, scaled it a thousand times. And as you can see, it's pretty much ready to print. Now, what I'm also going to do is just put in a modifier for this piece uh, that allows me to have a little bit of a higher density at the tip where this catches because I found it's sometimes a little fragile. So I'm just going to change the infill density here to 80% and go to the main part and make the infill density just 30%. And this means you get a nice higher density part in the middle. Now we can just see it's just going to slice and then when we go to preview, what we should see hopefully, is you can see a little step here where the modifier is. And if we scan halfway down, you can see the density of the slicing is much higher just here. And this means we're going to get a stronger part around that area. OK, so this looks good. I've got my layer height set to 0.3 millimeter, which should be good. Honeycomb infill. Um, we're going to put a brim on this just to keep it stuck down. Uh, it's slightly out of the print area, so I might just have to um, make that brim a bit smaller, but I'll do that later. And then I'm going to export it, and then we'll have a look at the print. Okay, so same thing again with the back pieces, but this time, instead of having a modifier, we actually want a thinner layer height for this catch, because I think 0.3 millimeters is a bit coarse for such a fine feature. So that's pretty easy. We just select the part, hit settings, layers, minimum Z0, the plate thickness is 5 mil, 0.3 layer height. And then from 5 mil to 20, say, we have a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Hit OK. It'll re-slice everything. And then we should be able to see just a slight change in the layer heights as we go up. There we go. And so hopefully this will make a slightly stronger and more detailed part for the catches. OK, so I'll just print both of these parts and show a time lapse of just one of them.
So I've now printed the sides and the back pieces, and now I've got to glue them into, together into a solid piece. Because we've used ABS to print these, we can use acetone to sort of melt and weld them together. So I'm putting a liberal amount on each side, and this will cause a sort of slurry in between them. And we want a lot of slurry because this means we get a more or less solid joint, and we get a piece that's almost as strong as a single piece. So we just apply it with a cotton swab, and we get a decent amount on there let it soften slightly, and then we're going to press it together, weigh it down, leave it for five minutes, and we'll get a really nice joint. While that's setting up, we're just going to tackle the back piece, so we're going to cut the three millimeter rod to length, cut it off with a hacksaw, File it to tidy it up. Now the back pieces were a little bit loose on the horizontal rods. Um, I made them a 3.5mm hole and it seems like my z-axis is really well um, calibrated. So we're just going to heat them up and we're going to crimp them shut with these little um, vice grips. And this basically just tightens up the hole. Now these ones weren't very tight but as I played around with it I managed to get it really tight and I got this nice push fit that uh, held the pieces nicely, but they're still removable. Just goes to show you can't ever be perfect with these prints, it's worth yep. just repairing them. Right, so I think we've uh, we've got something workable here. As you saw, some of the whole fit wasn't great, and I think these hinges might be a bit fragile, so I'll go back and have a look at that. But it's mostly static anyway, and I've tested it out, it works really well. Um, so I think that's the end of this week's video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, um, and if you've got any suggestions about what to do for future or how to make the videos better, just um, put it in the comment box. So thanks for watching.